Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 22nd and final video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. For this tutorial we'll cover building our game, fixing any bugs, playtesting it and we'll talk about how you can develop your game further after this tutorial. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page so you can help me a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and all the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the final tutorial. So, right now, we are in a position where we actually have a game that we could theoretically build and distribute. Yes, our game right now only has two scenes, it's rather small, not a lot goes on, but that's where you would build this further, and we'll talk about that a little later on. Now, there are a couple of things that we can explore in Unity to, you know, do final things, you know, make sure things are all okay. Uh, if we go to Edit and take a look in a couple of these settings, uh, let's start with Project Settings. Now, in here, you can have uh, plenty of actual... Uh, things that you can work with. So, like if you wanted to work with the editor or graphics or input manager, you know, that's completely fine. But there are things here that we can input to make it look kind of cool. So, firstly, let's go to player and let's have the company name. Well, I'm just going to put Jimmy Vegas Game Studios. Obviously, you would put whatever you want. Product name, um, what do we call it? Last Reflection. That was it. Uh, version, whatever version you want this to be for, that's completely fine. Now, if you want to release different versions, you know, updates and whatever, you could manually adjust that version here. This is the first one for us, so I want to keep it as 1.0. Uh, default icon, so this will be the icon that will be the executable. Uh, and if we click select, we can pick anything we've really imported. Um, so we could use one of our characters if we wanted to. Uh, we could use you know the logo if you wanted uh it's entirely up to you i'm going to go with akame akame what do we say akane wasn't it akame akame is from uh like a dragon gaiden uh akane so we'll use that as the logo for this game so we can set that uh further down we have some extra options that we can uh choose so we've got you know icon override for different version a different set you know whatever if you wanted to override it for any reason uh you could change things here if you wanted it full screen you know you can do all these different settings what i would recommend though is leaving most of these default and seeing how it looks the first time you can then come back into a lot of these options and change them like for example if you wanted a splash image for if you do a vr mode or whatever you could change it here it's entirely up to you uh, i'm gonna leave everything as default you obviously have different options for different uh, platforms. Like if you want it for Android, iOS, then you've got uh, a universal Windows platform. This is where you would set a lot of your settings for the actual executable. So player rather than mean player of the game, it means the executable player of the game, if that makes sense. Another one you could look at is the quality. Uh, in a game like this, the quality doesn't really matter because it's not intense. If you're trying to create a really graphical survival horror game, then yes, the quality settings would be relevant. Uh, most of these, again, for this style of game, aren't relevant, but it doesn't matter. If you want to change some of these things and dig deeper than what I'm going into in this tutorial, you obviously can. We just want to get the main things in place for our game. So once we've got these settings all there, what we could do is we could theoretically bug test, but we don't really want to do that just yet because we don't know what this executable is going to be like when we play it. So how do we make it? Well, if we go to file and in this version, build settings in Unity 6, it's a bit different, but you do indeed have these settings there. You can get to the correct menu and you just need to find anywhere that says either build or build and run. You have a drop down on build. Uh, if you want to do any of them, you have clean build or for skip data build. We don't really want to. We just want to build it and run it. So make sure that we click this and it will give us the option to create a folder. Uh, we'll just right click. Uh, let's go new and folder. We'll call it last reflection. 
And in that folder, click on Select Folder. And Unity will now begin building that executable file. So what is happening at this point? What is Unity doing? Well, it's compiling everything that we've created all in our scenes, everything, all our scripts, and it's putting it all into files which can then be shared. If you've played any games in Unity before, you may have seen them on itch.io or GOG or even Steam for that matter. You'll notice that there are certain files that exist whenever you build something in Unity. And there we go, we started straight away. Um, let's make sure this works, then we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the executable and what you can do with it. So this should take us to our main menu, and it does. And already we can see where we need to work on some of the um, bugs because these are a little bit too far that way. And I'm hoping you already know what the problem is. Let's go to credits. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, that's OK. I'm happy with that. And it should take us to the main menu. Perfect. So let's start game. So this is all the playtesting that we'll do to kind of work out where the bugs exist. So we already know the main menu has some bugs. So far, yeah. Hiding over in the corner. Yeah. Oh, you startled me. I didn't expect you there. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let's go to the park and look for a carne. So this fades out. Awesome. Let's start looking. So hopefully we should be able to look. Uh, so yes, so here we also have some problems. So this one looks okay. This one is a bit mismatched. Uh, Akane needs to go down a little bit. So this is where all playtesting bugs will happen. So let's Alt F4 out of that. And let's now tackle these bugs. So let's go to the main menu. Uh, scenes, main menu. And hopefully you already know, like I say, what this is. It's all about the anchoring point. So we need to make sure that our buttons are anchored correctly. So let's select all four buttons and set the anchoring to middle and left. So we want them to always appear in this section, although I suppose we could do middle and bottom, just so as they always do appear correctly right here. That's fine. Next, we need to set these logo, uh, sorry, the images. We should have these not as center, but as bottom right, just so as they always appear relative this way. Finally, the logo at the top. Let's have that like so. So now when we build this game again and we go to the main menu, everything should look a bit more relative and it should look a bit more normalized. Let's save. Now, the other bugs that we had were in the arc scene. So these are the major bugs. So once again, let's go to Canvas and let's go to Akane Shot. And we need to change her point of reference on the anchoring to the bottom, center, bottom. So when it comes to this style of game, I think you'll probably find a lot of the bugs you'll come across are misaligned textures because we've not set the anchoring point. It can be very common for people to forget about the anchoring point, and that is where all this comes into play. So uh, let's, uh, what was the other option? Of, oh, yes, it was the buttons, wasn't it? So it was the house interact. The house interact should not be like this. We need to anchor that in the top right. And the tree interact was OK. Uh, that was roughly right. So now what we've done is we've addressed the bugs that we found. So let's play test again. So to do that, we actually need to rebuild the game. So let's click build and run once again. Make sure we go to the last reflection folder, select folder, and it will overwrite everything you've previously built. Hopefully this will take a little bit. There we go. Not as long. So now let's make sure that the bug fixes have indeed been fixed. We should be able to see the buttons correctly. And we can. Excellent. And where are the characters? Characters are not appearing. So obviously we've done something to the characters. But this gives us a great opportunity to quit game. So let's make sure that that button does work now. Excellent, the button works.
So remember when I said that application.quit doesn't work inside the Unity engine, but does in the executable? There we go. That's where it works. So once more, let's go to our main menu. And what we can do is let's take our three images. Let's actually center them. Let's see what it looks like if they are centered. Resave, file, build and run. And let's do it this way. Uh, once we've confirmed that this looks OK, we'll talk about where to go with development from here, because there are many things that you can do. Let's see if this is OK. So, yeah, we know the buttons are OK. There we go. So I think that looks a little bit better now. They are appearing on the screen. Where is our next one? Are we going to get the next one? Yep. And finally, hopefully we can see a car up here. Is it going to generate it next? No. Well, either way, it should be OK because the other two were fine. Let's click Start Game. Let's make sure that we can indeed see um, the buttons correctly on the second scene. So yeah, let's go there. That's fine. Let's get through all this. I think the text box might be a little bit tall. I guess that's something you could change if you want to. So let's start looking for Akane. Yeah, okay. So can we have the button here? We can. Perfect. And she appears perfectly normal. Excellent. So there probably is more that you can do in terms of bug fixing, tweaking, you know, making things better like that text box, change that. Uh, but let's talk about what to do now. You followed every tutorial. You followed, if you're watching the full version of this tutorial, like that's like nearly five hours long, then you're at the point now where you think, OK, I've got this. Where do I go? Well, what you can do is you could create further scenes. You could create your own story with these characters and you would build things. Let's say you wanted to have multiple choice options. For example, Akane is on the scene and says, who should I talk to? Should I talk to Haruka or Kasumi? Well, remember how we did those buttons where you could look behind the tree or look behind the uh, cabin? You could use that exact same method to create multiple choice. And you could create other little mini games inside just using buttons. For example, um, if you were at a point where you say, should we go to the classroom, the park, or the shops? Again, you could have multiple choice, and whatever button you press, you could go to whichever scene that corresponds to. So the best thing for you to do now is create a story from all of this. Get some textures for your background. You know, I've provide, provided you with a few. AI can generate a lot of cool things these days. So if you fancy reaching out to a, an AI tool to generate a background image, just do it. You know, use it as a placeholder until you can get proper art, things like that. Uh, to learn more about coding, I have plenty of videos on my channel about all different things in regards of coding. Uh, there's so much to see and do on my channel. So, you know, there's videos there for you to check out. Uh, in terms of publishing your game, what you can do is you can use sites like itch.io or you could even go with somewhere like Steam. Um, it just depends how far you want to reach with your game and how good you think your game is. And do you need people to test it for you before you go big time? For example, take your game to itch.io, get people to play it, test it, learn what they like, don't like, fix those things, change those things, add things, and then take it to Steam and sell it on Steam for whatever price you would like. So think of it as that. In 22 tutorials, you've learned the skills to create a visual novel game. You've then learned where to put it to learn more about it, develop it more. And then you've also learned the place that you can put it, sell it, and make an income from what you've learned. That's what this channel is all about, creating games from scratch to help you build and reach a dream. Um, so I want to thank you very much for sticking with me over the past couple of hours um, and past tutorials and all stuff like that. hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, and as I said, feel free to subscribe, comment, whatever. I have loads of tutorials on my channel. Uh, I upload regularly, um, you know, at, at least once a week with brand new tutorials and new ideas and everything. Uh, so hopefully I will see you in another one of my tutorials. Thank you once again and take care.